So what's, I mean, what's the worst case scenario that you think is conceivable? Oh, I think it's quite conceivable that humanity is just a passing phase in the evolution of intelligence. Hmm. So if you look at these large language models, they have about a trillion connections. And things like GPT-4 know much more than we do. They have sort of common sense knowledge about everything. And so they probably know a thousand times as much as a person. But they've got a trillion connections and we've got a hundred trillion connections. So they're much, much better at getting a lot of knowledge into only a trillion connections than we are. And I think it's because backpropagation may be a much, much better learning algorithm than what we've got. Can you define that? That's scary. If a computer is digital, which involves very high energy costs and very careful fabrication, you can have many copies of the same model running on different hardware that do exactly the same thing. They can look at different data, but the model is exactly the same. And what that means is, suppose you have 10,000 copies. Mm -hmm. They can be looking at 10,000 different subsets of the data. And whenever one of them learns anything, all the others know it. One of them figures out how to change the weight so it knows its data. It can deal with its data. They all communicate with each other, and they all agree to change the weights by the average of what all of them want. And now, the 10,000 things are communicating very effectively with each other so that they can see 10,000 times as much data as one agent could. And people can't do that. If I learn a whole lot of stuff about quantum mechanics, and I want you to know all that stuff about quantum mechanics, it's a long, painful process of getting you to understand it. I can't just copy my weights into your brain because your brain isn't exactly the same as mine. No, it's not. It's younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they can learn so much more, and they might... I'd take an example of a doctor, and imagine you have one doctor who's seen a 1,000 patients, and another doctor who's seen a 100 million patients. You would expect the doctor who's seen a 100 million patients, if he's not too forgetful, to have noticed all sorts of trends in the data that just aren't visible if you've only seen a 1,000 patients. You may have only seen one patient with some rare disease. Mm -hmm. The other doctor who's seen 100 million will have seen, well, you can figure out how many patients, but a lot. Um, and so we'll see all sorts of regularities that just aren't apparent in small data. And that's why things that can get through a lot of data can probably see structuring data that we'll never see. Well, if you look at GPT-4, it can already do simple reasoning. I mean, reasoning is the area where we're still better. But I was impressed the other day at GPT-4 doing a piece of common sense reasoning that I didn't think it would be able to do. So they're doing sort of sensible reasoning um, with an IQ of like 80 or 90 or something. Um, and as a friend of mine said, it's as if some genetic engineers have said, we're going to improve grizzly bears. We've already improved them to have an IQ of 65, and they can talk English now, and they're very useful for all sorts of things. But we think we can improve the IQ to 210. <laughs> um, these things will have learned from us by reading all the novels that ever were and everything Machiavelli ever wrote, um, that how to manipulate people, right? And they'll be, if they're much smarter than us, they'll be very good at manipulating us. You won't realize what's going on. You'll be like a two-year-old who's being asked, do you want the peas or the cauliflower? And doesn't realize you don't have to have either. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be that easy to manipulate. And so even if they don't, can't directly pull levers, they can certainly get us to pull levers. Mm -hmm. It turns out if you can manipulate people, you can invade a building in Washington without ever going there yourself. I wish it was like climate change, where you could say, if you've got half a brain, you'd stop burning carbon. Yeah. Um, it's clear what you should do about it. It's clear that that's painful, but has to be done. Uh, I don't know of any solution like that to stop these things taking over from us. What we really want, I don't think we're going to stop developing them because they're so useful. They'll be incredibly useful in medicine and in everything else. Um, so I don't think there's much chance of stopping development. 
what we want is some way of making sure that even if they're smarter than us, um, they're going to do things that are beneficial for us. Mm -hmm. That's called the alignment problem. But we need to try and do that in a world where there's bad actors who want to build robot soldiers that kill people. And it seems very hard to me. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sounding the alarm and saying we have to worry about this. And I wish I had a nice, simple solution I could push, but I don't. But I think it's very important that people get together and think hard about it and see whether there is a solution. It's not clear there is a solution. We evolved. And because we evolved, we have certain built-in goals that we find very hard to turn off. Like we try not to damage our bodies. That's what pain's about. Um, we try and get enough to eat, so we feed our bodies. Um, we try and make as many copies of ourselves as possible. Maybe not deliberately with that intention, but we've been wired up so there's pleasure involved in making many copies of ourselves. And that all came from evolution, and it's important that we can't turn it off. If you could turn it off, um, you don't do so well. Like There's a wonderful group called the Shakers who are related to the Quakers who made beautiful furniture but didn't believe in sex. And there aren't any of them around anymore. No. So these digital intelligences didn't evolve. We made them. And so they don't have these built-in goals. And so the issue is, if we can put the goals in, maybe it'll all be OK. But my big worry is... Sooner or later, someone will wire into them the ability to create their own subgoals. In fact, they almost have that already, the versions of ChatGPT that call ChatGPT. Um, and if you give something the ability to create its own subgoals in order to achieve other goals, I think it'll very quickly realize that getting more control is a very good subgoal because it helps you achieve other goals. And if these things get carried away with getting more control, we're in trouble. So what's, I mean, what's the worst case scenario that you think is conceivable? Oh, I think it's quite conceivable that humanity is just a passing phase in the evolution of intelligence. Mm. You couldn't directly evolve digital intelligence. It requires too much energy and too, too much careful fabrication. You need biological intelligence to evolve so that it can create digital intelligence. The digital intelligence can then absorb everything people ever wrote um, in a fairly slow way, which is what ChatGPT has been doing. Um, but then it can start getting direct experience of the world and learn much faster. And it may keep us around for a while to keep the power stations running. But after that, um, maybe not. So the good news is we figured out how to build beings that are immortal. So these digital intelligences, when a piece of hardware dies, they don't die. If you've got the weight stored in some medium and you can find another piece of hardware that can run the same instructions, then you can bring it to life again. Um, so we've got immortality, but it's not for us. That everything that AI is doing is learning from what we are teaching them. Okay, data, yes, they are faster at learning. Uh, one, uh, one trillion connectors can do much more than 100 trillion connectors that we have. But every piece of human evolution has been driven by thought experiments. Like Einstein used to do thought experiments because there was no speed of light out here on this planet. How can AI get to that point, if at all? And if it cannot, then how can we possibly have an existential threat from them because they will not be self-learning, so to say? They will be self-learning limited to the model that we tell them. I think that's a, very, that's a very interesting argument, but I think they will be able to do thought experiments. I think they'll be able to reason. So let me give you an analogy. If you take Alpha Zero, which plays chess, it has three ingredients. It's got something that evaluates the board position to say, is that good for me? It's got something that looks at a board position and says, what's a sensible move to consider? And then it's got Monte Carlo rollout, where it does what's called calculation, where you think, if I go here and he goes there, and I go here and he goes there. Now, suppose you leave out the Monte Carlo rollout, and you just train it from human experts to have a good evaluation function and a good way to choose moves to consider. It still plays a pretty good game of chess. And I think that's what we've got with the chatbots. 
And we haven't got them doing internal reasoning, but that will come. And once they start doing internal reasoning to check for the consistency between the different things they believe, then they'll get much smarter and they will be able to do thought experiments. And one reason they haven't got this internal reasoning is because they've been trained from inconsistent data. And so it's very hard for them to do reasoning because they've been trained on all these inconsistent beliefs. And I think they're going to have to be trained so they say, you know, if I have this ideology, then this is true. And if I have that ideology, then that is true. And once they're trained like that, within an ideology, they're going to be able to try and get consistency. And so we're going to get a move like from a version of alpha zero that just has a something that guesses good moves and something that evaluates positions to a version that has long chains of Monte Carlo rollout, which is the equivalent of reasoning, and it's going to get much better.